pray that every obstacle that you face, every obstacle that you face, that it will become plain in the name of Jesus. Every mountain that is set before you, look at how she overcame that mountain. Look at how she overcame that mountain. A child of faith, a child of faith. I don't know what mountain has been in front of you. I don't know what mountain that has been in front of you, but if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it is able to move mountains. It is able to move mountains. I want us to celebrate Jesus. I want us to look up the name of Jesus. Let's pray right here. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do much better than that. We thank you. We thank you. We're in the mood of prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you for your power. We thank you that we have been assembled here together, Lord, that indeed you will equip us and unleash us, O oh Lord, for action in your kingdom. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit transforms us. We pray that your Holy Spirit guides us towards the understanding of you and the understanding of your word. Father, fill this place with your love. Fill this place with your light. You're not saying amen. Fill this place with your life, O oh Lord. We pray that every darkness, every heaviness that has entered here, Lord Father, we are not taking it with us. Father, we are not taking it with us. Father, we are going unleashed. We are going transformed. Our minds are renewed in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Celebrate Jesus if you're here. Thank you. David said that this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Are there some people who have joy? Are there some people who have joy? Are there some people who are glad to be in the creation of God? He said that this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because he finds himself in the creation of God. And when you are found in the creation of God, you come to understand that God who is the creator of all things, that his creation is good. Are there some people ready to sing for the goodness of God? Some people ready to shout for the goodness of God? People who are ready to see the goodness of God in your life. So every day you rejoice. There is a song that we sing in the mother church every, every time and it goes like this. Joy, oh joy, when we go to heaven. Joy, oh joy, when we go to heaven. There is joy when we go to heaven. But there is joy now as well. There is joy now as well. There is joy now as well. Why is there joy already? Because God has already made you to be a citizen of heavenly places. You have the passport all. You need to wait. Jesus lives on the inside of you. So you have joy. You have joy. You have joy. Every day you wake up and you say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. There are some people, they only celebrate when it's their birthday. They wait for the turn of the year to celebrate. Today, as I was wearing my suit, I was thinking maybe this is birthday suit. But then I thought, ah, but Jesus lives on the inside of me. So if I want to wear this suit today, I will wear it. Because if he even dresses the lilies, if he even, he even cares for the lilies, that is how he is. How much more will he clothe us? How much more shall he clothe us? That is the God that we serve. So you have to come to that understanding that where we find ourselves as a Christian, you're not just anyone. You are specially and wonderfully made. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. He lives on the inside of you. You guys are not excited for that. The promise, the promise that was the promise of old, we have received it now. And this month we are in the book of Acts. We are in the book of Acts. The theme of the month is? Unleashed for action. And we are in Acts of the Apostles. So we know it as the book of Acts, Hundling in the Netherlands, and we are treating the entire book of Acts. The book of Acts has 28 chapters. This month, how many days does this month have? 29. This month has 29 days. It means that every day we are reading one chapter. Every day we are reading one chapter, and there's even one day of grace. There is the grace day as well. So today is the 4th of February, so it means that at the end of this day, you have to read Acts chapter 1 until chapter 4. And today during my sermon, we will treat Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, and Acts chapter 3. Why? When you read the book of Acts, you come to understand that these men who were empowered, that they turned the world upside down. They turned the world upside down. Are there some people ready to turn the world upside down? Are there some people ready to turn the world upside down? Why? Because Jesus turned your life upside down first. He turned your life upside down first. The, when you read the Bible, you come to understand that he has called us from a place of darkness into his marvelous light. 
that is what Jesus does. It is always about exchange. We bring our pain. We bring our shame. We bring our guilt. And he gives us his love, his power, his freedom. We come with chains. But he comes with liberty. Are there some people happy for that exchange? Are there some people happy for that exchange? That Jesus Christ is now. He is making all things new. The Bible says that therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. All things are becoming new right now. All things are becoming new right now. All things are becoming new right now. I don't know what old things you have been holding on to. But let go and let God. Let go and let God. If you are holding on to something, how is someone able to give you something new? Yep, it's all false. Who can, who can you noch meer ontvangen? Let it go and let God give you a new thing. I pray that God does a new thing in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So this month we are treating the book of Acts. And today the reader will need a, a lot of water because we're reading a lot. So let's give it up for our reader, <laughs> Sister Alicia. So we're trying to treat Acts chapter 1 till Acts chapter 3. And we'll skip a few bits. Those bits you study it at home. And today make sure that everyone reads Acts chapter 4. If you can read it, Acts chapter 1 from the verse 1 up until 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 1 up until 8, and I read in the NKJV version. The former account I made, Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. For, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. Amen. The entire church, can we read the verse 8 together? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. Receive power in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall receive power. There is power for you. No Christian lacks power. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is upon you. Not only is he upon you, he's within you. So you have power to be witnesses. When you read carefully, you come to understand that after you receive the power, you shall be witnesses to Jesus Christ, to every end of the earth. Are there some witnesses of Jesus Christ here? Are there some witnesses of Jesus Christ here? You... Go from a stranger to a witness. First, you didn't know him, but now you are a witness of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he lives on the inside of you. And you are to be a witness of him to every end of the earth. When we started Amsterdam City Church, that was uh, maybe three and a half years ago. I thought someone would celebrate Jesus for that. Uh, maybe it's just me. As for me, I was together with Dickness and Leona. And we started Amsterdam City Church. We were in the protocol team. And in my mind, I, I thought it is just about Amsterdam. We're going to have a new church in Amsterdam. It was exciting. We thought, yeah, let's go for it. Not knowing that it is not only about Amsterdam. It is not only about Amsterdam. It is also about Rotterdam. It is also about Nijmegen. It is also about Utrecht, Algmar, every city that is in the nation of the Netherlands. We are going there and we are going to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. Not only is it even about the Netherlands. Today we have brothers from Austria here who are about to start City Church in Austria. So every end of the earth needs to hear about Jesus Christ. We preach the message of the cross. What is the message of the cross? It is the death, it is the burial, it is the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ. 
That is what we are preaching. That is what we are witnesses of. When we say that, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, to be in Christ, it means that you are together with Christ. It means that you are joined together with him. You bent Sama with him. What we always say in City Church District is that we identify with Christ. Duh, we are Christians. So we identify with Christ. So we say that his death was our death. We say that his burial was our burial. We say that his resurrection is our resurrection. We say that his ascension is our ascension. Why? Because when he died, we died too. We died to the old self. The old things have passed away. That old nature of sin, it is gone. It is buried. That is when we say that his burial is our burial. When we were baptized, baptism is a symbol of being buried. That indeed that the dead, is, the dead are buried. And we don't dig them back up, do we? Only one person said no. No, we don't dig them back up, but on the third day. Someone shout on the third day. Someone shout on the third day. On the third day, Jesus Christ, he resurrected. This is the gospel. And the gospel makes us to understand that if it wasn't for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we would still be stuck in our sins. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you read from the verse 14 going. So we are called to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he lives on the inside of you. So go and tell others about him. Go and tell others about him. Go and tell others about him. That is what we are speaking on this, this month, Acts of the Apostles. And the theme is Acts of the Apostles, but it is actually by the Spirit of God. Because it is the Spirit of God who gives the power. It is the Spirit of God who gives the power. So it is Acts of the Spirit through the Apostles. Through the Apostles. Through the Apostles. An Apostle, some of you might think, what is an Apostle? An Apostle is literally a messenger of God. An apostle is a messenger of God. But we have called to be messengers. Why? Because we are called to be ambassadors for Christ. He calls you a royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood, so you are called to preach and to speak the word of God to the nations. Amen. Are there some people who are ready for that commission? Are there some people who are ready for that commission? A person on a, with that vision is a person on a mission. You are on a mission to be a witness of Christ. So that is still the verse 8. Amen. We pick it up from the verse 15, Acts chapter 1, verse 15, and we read until the verse 21, no, 22, sorry. Acts chapter 1, verse 15 to 22, and I read in Jesus' name. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about 120, and said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that field is called in their own language. Akal Dama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Amen. Amen. If you can read the verse 22 as well. Beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. Amen. Amen. So when you read the book of Acts, you're going to read a lot of prophecies in the Old Testament. You're going to read a lot of prophecies in the Old Testament. Why? Because they are explaining that those prophecies, it was all about Jesus. It was all about Jesus. Jesus said one time that these scriptures that you read, these scriptures are the scriptures that testify of me. The Old Testament, that is the, let's say, the Bible that they had at that point of time. It is all about Jesus from Genesis to Malachi. It is talking about the cross. It is talking about the Messiah who was to come. So they are explaining that indeed these things, they have been prophesied, but the time is now. The time has come now where God himself, he became a man and he was on the cross to die for our sins. And not only did he die for our sins, he resurrected. So the Christian faith is the resurrection faith. I don't know if you have been down. I don't know if you have been down and out. But in this point, rise. At this time, rise. At this time, rise. The Christian faith is the resurrection faith. It means that I don't know how long you've been down for. 
But you cannot stay down. You cannot stay down. You cannot stay down. I don't know what has kept you there, but this is the time where you resurrect. You resurrect together with Jesus. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. This is the time of your resurrection. It is the time of elevation. When you are Christ, you do not stay where you were. That is why the future is always bright with Jesus. The future is always bright with Jesus. The future is always bright with Jesus. Because dead things are coming to life right now. Dead things are coming to life right now. I don't know what dream or what vision you might have had. And you have given up right now. You have given up to this point. You have to hope up But Jesus Christ is saying that he is the life and the resurrection. He is the resurrection and the life. That is who he is. The Bible makes us to understand that the word of God, that it is life and it is spirit. It is living and it is active. So with the word of God, you cannot be passive. With the word of God, you cannot be passive. With the word of God, you cannot be passive. It makes you active. Why? Because it makes you go into the thing that God has said. It makes you go into the promises of God. The promises of God, they are yes and they are. They are yes and they are. They are yes and they are. The Bible says that God is ready to perform his word. God is ready. Are you ready? God is ready. Are you ready? Shout, I am ready. Tell your neighbor, I am ready. Shout to your neighbor, I am ready. You are ready. God is ready to perform his word. So that is why we too, we are unleashed for action. There has to be a performance. There must be a performance in the name of Jesus. So here again, when you read verse 32, it says, beginning from the baptism of John. So the baptism of John, when John baptized Jesus, that was basically the start of Jesus' earthly ministry. So from the baptism of John to the resurrection, so that is the entire earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, they needed someone to be a witness of the life of Jesus Christ. But we too now, we are also called to be witnesses of Jesus because he lives on the inside of us. He lives on the inside of you. He lives on the inside of you. Amen. So when you go home, do very well to read Acts chapter 1 if you haven't done so already. We're going to pick it up from Acts chapter 2. We're going to pick it up from Acts chapter 2. Handling of Hosek 2, the coming of the Holy Spirit. If you can pick it up from the verse 1 up until the verse 8. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, and I read in Jesus' mm. name. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, mm. they were all with one accord in one place. Mm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Amen. Amen. Do you see what happens when you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you see what is able when you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Impossible things become possible when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray that people will marvel and look at you. And they will be amazed by the things that you are doing for the kingdom of God. Because it was you, us who weren't worthy, now qualified, now equipped, now filled with the Holy Spirit to show forth the splendor of God. They were amazed. They were like, how is this happening? These people that are normal Galileans, they might think of you, that girl, we know her. That boy, we know her. We know her from back in the days. Wasn't that the same guy who? Wasn't that the same girl who? Wasn't that the same brother who? Who used to be there and there and there? But when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, today the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. All that you need to do is you need to welcome him. The Bible says that you shall receive that promise when you believe in Jesus Christ. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, impossibilities become possible. So they, were, they marveled. They were so amazed. Even when you read the book of Acts and you read the story of a man called Saul. Saul also known as the killer man. Killer black, as Pastor John likes to say. Killer black. 
when he had that encounter with Jesus Christ, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was the one that even wrote two-thirds of the New Testament that we read now. Things become possible with the Holy Spirit. We are praying that the harvest that is ahead of us, that that harvest that is ahead of us this year, that as a church we will rise up, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we will gather it for the kingdom of God. You are not shouting amen to that. You are not shouting amen to that. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I will read further from the verse 9. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said they are full of new wine. So people are glorifying Jesus. They were indeed fulfilling the promise that was in Joel chapter 2. And they were being mocked. They were like, these people have to be drunk. I don't know who has mocked you before. I don't know if maybe your life has been a life of mockery so far. But even Jesus Christ was mocked. But he's now ready to change your story. He is now ready to change your story. Let them mock you, but continue in that thing that God has called you to. Because there is power in it. God has called you to indeed be an ambassador for him. To indeed be, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. If you read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So let others mock you. Don't be afraid of people. Don't be afraid of people. Don't be afraid of people. But be ever willing to please your father who is in heaven and who is in you. Because when you please your father, when you please your father, when you do the will of your father, when you do the will of your father, we say that yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory. We pray that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So as Christians, we are called to a life of worship. A life of worship is a life of obedience. A life of worship is a life of sacrifice. A life of worship is a life of bowing to the will of God. Jesus said in John chapter 4 verse 34 that my food, some of us are thinking about nasi that we're going to eat this afternoon. Jesus is saying my food is to do the will of God and to finish his work. So be in that, be in that same mode. Be, have that same diet, the diet of Jesus Christ, where you want to do the will of God, even if others laugh at you, even if others mock you, may you have that endurance. I pray endurance over your life in the name of Jesus. I pray endurance over your life in the name of Jesus. Jesus endured for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. It wasn't that easy for him. When you read the Bible carefully, you come to understand that it wasn't easy for him. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup be taken away from me. But because he knew the will of the Father, he endured it. He endured it. He endured it. People were spitting at him, lashing him, laughing at him. He, they were saying, if you call yourself the king of the Jews, rescue yourself from this situation. Let us see. Not knowing that his plan, that his plan was to make the entire world believers in him. His plan was to extend his love, extend his life to all the corners of the world. So we have to have that same mode. We have to have that same thinking in the name of Jesus. Amen. And don't be discouraged. The Bible says that I have never seen the righteous of God forsaken. You shall never be forsaken in the name of Jesus. God will never leave you orphans. God will never leave you ashamed. We are also not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And he will never put you to shame. You shall never be put to shame in the name of Jesus. Okay, we read it from the verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Sometimes raise your voice. Sometimes raise your voice. Sometimes raise your voice. Peter, he raised up from the crowd and his voice was to be heard. I don't know which demons and principalities and powers have been keeping your mouth shut, have been keeping you mute, but we disallow that in the name of Jesus. We cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that your voice shall be heard. You have been silent for too long. The weapon that God has given you is your mouth. That is the weapon that God has given you. You have been silent. You have let them talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. 
But I pray that your voice shall be heard. I pray that you shall rise up in situations where things are poor, in situations where things are dark, in situations where things are dead. Jesus, even in the grave, he is Lord. Even in the grave, he is Lord. So you have to open your mouth and speak. Speak to your situation. When you read Genesis, you come to understand that when God created the world, he was speaking. He said, let there be light. In your situation, speak. I don't know what you are going through, but speak to your situation. I pray that things that are not as of now, that they shall become when you speak. That they shall become when you speak. Only this side is liking this message. Only this side is believing. When you open your mouth, when you speak, and when you lift up your voice, things shall happen. That is why in church, when we are prophesying, people are like, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let the devil know. Let the devil know. Let the devil know. When we shout amen. When we shout hallelujah. When we shout praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord in this place. Lift up your voice in this place. Lift up your voice in this place. In the name of Jesus. So Peter, standing up with the eleven, he raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known. Someone shout, let this be known. Let this be known. I pray that it shall be known that you are a child of God. I pray that it shall be known that you are a child of God. That because you are a child of God, whenever weapons are being formed and fashioned and designed against you, they shall never prosper in the name of Jesus. Because you are with him. Because you are with Christ. You can do all things. Let it be known. Let it be known that you are blessed. Let it be known that you are favored. Let it be known that you are above any power and every principality. Let it be known. Let it be known in the name of Jesus. Amen. My time is fast spent to A. I was thinking maybe I could do Acts chapter 1 till 3, but even till 2 is going to be challenged. But Jesus Christ is with us. Amen. Amen. And we shall continue. So we, we fast forward. We fast forward to 34. Acts chapter 2, verse 34. Acts chapter 2, verse 34. If Acts the reader can read. Chapter 2, verse 34. And I read in Jesus' name. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand. Amen. 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 And I read the 35 as well. Acts chapter 2, verse 34 and 35, it says, For David did not ascend into the heavens. So this was a prophecy concerning David. But you come to understand that the prophecy was not about David. The prophecy was about Jesus Christ. So when you go home, kindly read the passage in front of this from the verse about 21 to 33. And it says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Till I make your enemies your footstool. So that is God said to God. God the Father said to God the Son, sit at my right hand. The right hand of God is the place of the highest power. It is the place of the highest authority. But the Bible makes us to understand that we are seated together with Jesus in heavenly places. So you are also sat at the right hand of God in the spiritual realms. You are sat in places of power. You are sat in places of authority. So whenever you speak, things must happen. Things must happen. Things must happen. You speak life into dead situations. Why? Because you have been seated at the right hand of God. Isn't that glorious? We who weren't worthy. The Bible makes us to understand that Christ died for us whilst we were yet sinners. But how great is his love that he has raised us and that he has made us righteous, made us holy, made us new, made us worthy. We are not worthy of ourselves, but we are worthy because of what he did on the cross. And he says, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Your footstool is when you wait on the relaxer bank of our your foot on the can relaxer. I'm not going to put my foot on this because ABQ Factory will fight me. But Jesus Christ, it shows that he is far above, that he is in control, that he is in charge, that he is in the highest class. And that is your class as well. That is your class as well. And the enemies of Jesus Christ, that is death, that is sin, that is your enemy as well. So those powers and principalities that have been tormenting you, they are at your footstool. You are far above. You are far above. You are far above. 
I don't know, maybe you have been going through any depression. But we oppress that depression. We suppress that depression. There are enemies that are at our foot still. We need to come to that realization that we are seated together with Jesus. And it isn't that we have to fight it ourselves. He has already won the victory. He has already won the battle. He is a mighty warrior. He is great in battle. So speak to that situation. Speak to that issue and know that you are in, a far highest, you are in the highest position already. You don't have to pray, Father, take me higher. You're already in the highest of the highest of the highest of the highest because you are found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll soon round up my message. <clears throat> Verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Someone say, Lord and Christ. Someone say, Lord and Christ. Some people. They want Jesus to be their Christ, but they don't want Jesus to be their Lord. But he has been made Lord and Christ. He is Lord over all. He is the Christ. Christ meaning that he is the Messiah. He is the anointed one. He is the anointed one to take away the sin of the world. And he is Lord over all. He is the master. The Bible makes us to understand that the life that we have, it isn't the life of our own, but it is life that we live because he lives on the inside of us. So let him be your Lord and Savior. Let him be Lord and Christ in your life. Amen. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And they were cut to the heart. Sometimes the word of God, it chooks you. Sometimes the word of God, it chooks you. But the Bible says that the word of God, it is able to separate between soul and spirit. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. So receive that word of God. Sometimes it is, the Bible says that the word of God, it is useful for teaching, rebuke, correcting, and training. So sometimes discipline, it may hurt. But discipline is an act of love. It is an act so that you may grow. So they heard this word and they were like, okay, what would we do? Human beings, mankind, we are always in the business. What would we do? Maybe you have to build a tower up until the heavens. Maybe we have to fast for the whole year. Maybe you have to pray for the whole day. They were, we are always busy with what do we have to do? Doing, doing, works. We want to, the Bible says that there was a, in the Bible there is a passage that says, how can we work the works of God? But the work of God is to believe. The work of God is to believe. The work of God is to believe. It is all about believing in Jesus Christ. It is all about believing in the cross. So what did Peter reply to them? Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the verse 38. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. It is all about believing in Jesus Christ. It is all about repenting. It is all about turning your back to the old life and turning yourself to the new. Turning yourself to the new. Turning yourself to the new. You do not have to think that ik ben het niet waard. Ik ben het niet waard. Ik kon het niet. And that is true. It is true that you weren't able to do it. But glory be to God is that Jesus Christ was able to do it. And glory be to God is that the work of Jesus Christ, the Bible makes us to understand that we are beneficiaries. We profiteren. We are just profiteers from the work that Jesus has done. We are profiteers, and don't be ashamed in that. Just receive, just receive, just receive. And when you receive it, what do you do with stuff that you receive? You use it as well. So use it. Jesus Christ, when He comes and lives on the inside of you, He comes with the entire package. He comes with the gifts. He comes with the power. The Bible says that indeed every spiritual blessing that is in Jesus Christ, that it is ours. So receive that package, receive that power, receive that breakthrough, receive that higher life, receive that eternal life. Shout amen in this place. I zoom into the verse 42 and it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. 
I want us to be on our feet. I want us to be on our feet. And we are going to look at something very briefly as we are about to enter into prayer. When you continue from Acts chapter 3, it says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Today we are at the ninth hour. Today we are at the ninth hour. Today we are at the ninth hour. The ninth hour is the time where you have given up on things. Where you have given up, where all hope seems to be lost. But the hope seems to be lost. But our hope is found in Jesus Christ. So I don't know what you are hoping for. I don't know what expectation you came here today with. But as we are about to lift up a prayer in this place, I pray that God will meet you at your point of need. So I want every person to lift up their voice in prayer. Every person to lift up their voice in prayer. This is the ninth hour. And God is showering his blessing. God is making you anew. God is giving you strength. Lift up every voice right now. Lift up every voice right now. We are at the ninth hour. We are at the ninth hour. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever need you have. Whatever need you have. Whatever you need you have. In the name of Jesus. It shall come to pass. And every heart will confess. In the name of Jesus. Lord indeed. We come not in our own name. We come in the name of the Lord. And in the name of Jesus. We come against anything that was done against the move of God. We come against it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus we declare. A divine turn around in Jesus' name. A divine turn around in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, I pick it up from the verse 3. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms? And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Something interesting that happened in this passage is that he looked to them. And they looked to him. I pray that your helper locates you right now. I pray that your helper locates you right now. I pray that your helper locates you right now. But when your helper locates you, your attention must go to the helper. Your attention must go to the helper. Jesus Christ is the helper. The Holy Spirit is the helper. The Bible says that another name for the Holy Spirit is that he is the helper. And that when you fix your eyes on him, you shall look and live. You shall look and live. You shall look and live. So in this moment, we are praying that our eyes are fixed on Jesus. The resurrected Jesus. The resurrected Jesus. Fix your eyes on your helper. Fix your eyes on your helper. He is looking to you. With just one look. 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 Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. Said that Jesus Christ, Jesus. He is the author and He is the finisher, finisher. Yes. of our faith. Yes. Jesus Christ, He is the author and He is the finisher, finisher of, of our, our faith. faith. Yes. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. Amen. He is the beginning and He is the end. Amen. He declares the end from the beginning. Yes. I don't know where, where your story has started, but Jesus is about to finish it. Amen. Jesus is about to finish Amen. it. Amen. Jesus is about to finish Amen. it. Amen. When you look to Jesus, when you fix your eyes on Him. Yes. The Bible says that just as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent, and every person that looked to the bronze serpent was healed, so you shall be healed when you look unto Jesus. 
So look unto Jesus right now. Yes, oh we are lifting up our prayer with every head bowed down. Jesus. Bow down your head and close your eyes and look to him. 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 Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. He is calling you right now. He is restoring all things right now. He is making all things anew right now. He is making all things anew right now. No one but you, O Lord. No one but you, Lord. Jesus, you are lifted up, O Father. You will draw us all unto you. You will draw us all unto you, O Father God. Father Lord Jesus, we thank you, O Father God, that you, O Father Lord Jesus, are there with open arms, O Father Lord, to receive us, O Father Lord Jesus. Receive us, O Father Lord Jesus. Receive us, O Father Lord Jesus. The praise and worship team can help me sing. One thing I desire. Place your hand on your heart. shall be saved. The Bible says that you shall be saved. That indeed he was on the cross to die for you. To remove your sins. To remove your sins away from you. 
and to give you life. If today you are here and you are hearing that call of Jesus, you are hearing that call of Jesus and you want to look to him and you want to receive him in your life so that he can make you new, so that you can start afresh. If you want to make that bold step, kindly lift up your hands. Kindly lift up your hands. Kindly lift up your hands to the heavens. Lift it higher so that we can see you. If you want to lift to Jesus, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands to the heavens so that the heavens see you. If you have lifted up your hands, kindly come to the front. Rush to the altar. I want to pray with you. Rush to the altar. I want to pray with you. My brother, every person that has raised their hand, kindly come to the front. Kindly come to the front. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. My brother, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Kindly come to the front. Kindly come to the front. Don't be shy. 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 I want to pray with you. On Calvary. On Calvary. You left heaven. On Calvary, on Calvary, celebrate them as they're coming. Don't be shocked. This is the moment of salvation. Just we just wonder. On Calvary, you look at me. On Calvary, on Calvary, you look at me. On Calvary, on Calvary, you look at me. We just wonder. We just wonder. Listen, it is not about the person that is standing next to you, that is standing beside you. This is the moment of salvation. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that it, where he has called you. And the question is, are you going to pick up that call? Are you going to pick up that call? Are you going to pick up that call? So we are about to sing this song one more time. And there is still time to come to the front. I want to pray with you. And as we are about to pray, you will translate from darkness into light. So we are singing this song one more time. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed, on Calvary, because this is your time. You on Calvary, on Calvary, you looked at me. Hey, with just one look, with just one look, on Calvary, you looked at me. crowd Jesus is able to save you right where you are Jesus is able to save you right where you are the will of God the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so if you want to receive life if you want to receive eternal life if you want your name to be written in the book of life where you receive access to the kingdom of life you can come to the front as we are about to pray, the entire church, let's lift up our two hands. Let's lift up every hand to the heavens. The Bible says that when you believe in the name of the Lord, and when you call upon him, that you shall be saved. That you shall be saved. So all that we have to do is that we have to confess him with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Christ, and that he is Lord. And if you do that, when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes and lives on the inside of you. So together with the entire church, every hand's lifted up. Repeat these words after me. Father Lord Jesus, Father Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I thank you, I thank that, you, you died that you died for my sins, for my sins that, you died that you died for my justification, for my justification that, you died that you died so I might have life. So that I might have Holy, life. Spirit, Holy Spirit, come and live, come and live on the inside of me. Inside Make me anew. Make me anew. Make me anew. Give me your power. Give me your strength. Give me your healing. Give me your light. Give me your light. Feed me. Fill me. Fill me with your presence. With your love. And your light. From this day, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Be the Lord of my life. Direct my path from now till forever. In the name of Jesus. Now celebrate. Celebrate. Hallelujah.